So a quick revision for anyone who's about to do a practical inspection and test assessment. So first thing first is to get started and you're going to need some equipment. You're going to need a pen. Um, you're going to need a low resistance ohm meter. You're going to need an insulation resistance tester. You're going to need an approved voltage indicator and proving unit. You're going to need your lock off kit, signs, barriers, padlock. You're going to need an earth fault loop impedance tester. You're going to need an RCD tester and you're probably going to need a phase rotation meter if you're doing it on three phase. So that's your equipment. What's the most obvious thing I've forgotten on that list? Of course, PPE. You're going to need some PPE, but until you do a risk assessment, you might not know what. And that's next. Like I say, next, you do a risk assessment and assess the work in area, basically. All rigs are a little bit different and all uh, workshops are a little bit different. Um, but just because it's a training centre doesn't mean you shouldn't be aware of the hazards around you. So risk assess the place, decide what PPE you're going to need, what barriers you're going to need to put up, signage, communication, all that kind of stuff. And then lock off that install, ready to get started. And you're going to have to prove by safe isolation that it's safer to work on. So remember the basics, you need to check your approved unit first for damage, make sure it's actually working in your proven unit. And then you're going to put the probe on the safer terminal first, because if you put it on a live terminal, then the other one becomes live and you don't want to be flapping a live program. When you go across phases, that's a little bit difficult. So my advice is to just get both probes very close to both terminals and then put them in together. Um, for larger panels, you know, you, you've got to be careful waving a probe around because of things like arc flash and that. It's just not a habit to form at all. Always probe one goes on the like earth terminal. But this is my process uh, for three phase. Earth, one, two, three off the live onto neutral one two three and then off both very close into the lives one two three and then you're done but just be aware of that danger so next paperwork fill in as much as you can before you get going you can fill in all the installation details, client details, circuit details. You can get all the data you need off the protective devices, um, cable sizes, all those kind of things you can get at this stage. Just focus on what you can fill in. So next you're gonna start your inspection. Now there's a detailed list of what we need to inspect in the regs and guidance note three. So make sure you're following that. In amendment to the paperwork uh, schedule of inspections has been reduced, but we still need to confirm all the same things we did before. So make sure you use either the regs or guidance note three and go through all of them inspection checklists. So once you've inspected, then it's time to get tested. I'm going to start with the earthing conductor and your main protective bonding conductors. And for each of them tests, you're gonna to have to remove each one from the main earthing terminal and use uh, method two or the long lead method to record your continuity. Now, there's not actually a place on the IT's form to record the value of this, but we're just confirming that it is continuous and it's low resistance, so you get guidance of 0 0.05 for bonding conductors, but just as low as you can go, really. For that, obviously, you're going to use the low resistance ohm meter. And make sure you check that it's working first. Check the batteries are in order, test leads are working. Do your open lead and close lead test to make sure the readings change um, and make sure it's been calibrated. After all, if you get funny readings, it's just going to confuse you. So make sure it's working. If you've got a calibration card, then use that. 
So once you've checked the foundations of the earth in, it's time for your radial circuits. So you're going to check continuity of your CPCs. Again, low resistance ohm meter, but this time you're going to use an R1, R2 method. It just makes sense. If you pay attention along the way and you're checking that the ground cable is actually in the live terminal, then you're proving polarity at the same time. So we can get two jobs done with one test. To do that, you're going to take the line conductor out of the breaker and put it in the CPC bar. You might need to use some link leads, but make sure you've nulled your test leads from your equipment and you're going to test between live and CPC at every single point on the circuit. That means every single point on the circuit. And you're going to record the highest result. So next it's ring final circuits and there are three stages to this test and there are no shortcuts. It is the simplest way to confirm continuity and polarity of this type of circuit. You can't get away from it. <laughs> so first you do your end to ends, little R1, little Rn, little R2, record them on your test sheet. And from that point, you can do two predictions, two calculations for stage two and stage three of this test. So write down your calculations and you should get a kind of target value. Then do stage two. So you're going to cross connect your live and your neutrals in the form of a figure of eight at the fuse board. And you're going to get a reading at the board. It should broadly match the calculation you just done for stage two. Um, and then you're going to test between live and neutral at every single socket on that circuit. Just write down any anomalies and just note which socket it was. It's going to help you fault find a bit later. If one of them was higher, then it could be a spur at this point, we don't know. Stage three is where you take your neutrals out and put the corresponding CPCs in. So we're cross-connecting the live and the CPCs in the form of figure of eight at the board. And again, take a reading and it should broadly match the calculation you did earlier. Then go between every single socket, between live and CPC, doing your continuity tests. And again, it should broadly match that value but if you've got twin and earth, it's never going to be exactly the same. It's not possible. After that, it's insulation resistance. So you're going to have to prep your install. So remove all loads, um, bypass any neons, contactors, anything like that. Anything that's going to, anything that the voltage is going to travel through and give you funny readings. Um, you're either going to get funny readings or make you think that there's a problem and there's not, or you're just going to damage components. So make sure it's just wiring in place only. That means you need to make sure the switches are in the closed position. And then ideally you can do the whole install in one, but you're only going to be able to do that if you've got MCBs. If you've got a split load board um, and with two RCDs, then you know the minimum tests you can do this in is two groups of tests. If you've got RCBOs, you're going to have to do them individually, um, but make sure you leave those CPCs in and all the earthing connected. That's important. Um, if you're not sure about you know this, look it up with your tutor um, or ask me questions in the comments and I can elaborate a little bit more. But the rule of thumb is that you're testing wiring only, uh, the insulation of the wiring only. The combinations are same safe isolation combinations really. So live to earth, live to neutral, neutral earth, the three phase, you've got the 10 combinations. So, you know, look it up and be sure. So after we've done that, we've confirmed all our cables are in the right place, all the insulation is intact, and it's to the minimum standards of BS7671. Now they say it's one mega ohm, but Guidance Note 3 also says for a new install, anything under 20 mega ohms should definitely be investigated. Most of the time it's going to be over range in a meter and that's what you're going for really. But once we've done that, we're thinking about putting energy into our install, but we need to check all the supply stuff first before we do that. We've checked that our cables are in place and we've checked all the insulation is okay. So we're, we're all pretty confident that our installs all right, but we just need to check their stuff first. So with a voltage indicator, so GS38 obviously, um, check for damage, make sure it's uh, working with the proving unit. And then on the supply side of your incomer, 
You're just going to go between live and neutral, live and earth, and make sure there's voltage there. And then you're going to check between neutral and earth and make sure there's not voltage there. For three phase, it's the same thing. We don't want to see voltage on neutral earth, but we do want to see voltage between live neutral, live earth, and between the phases themselves, but obviously you're going to see a higher voltage between them. Then recheck in the proving unit, just make sure it was all reading okay, especially when you did that neutral to earth one. We're on to external earth fault loop impedance. Now, we're still locked off at this stage, so we can remove the earthing conductor from the main earthing terminal. And we're going to clip one lead onto that, and the other lead is going to go onto our live uh, supply terminal. And just record your reading. It's a high current test you want for this one. And that's it. Pretty simple one, this, but be careful. You are now um, kind of using the probes and dealing with uh, actual electricity, so make sure you've got your GS38 leads and everything's you know safe to work on no damage leads and no bodges with bits of tape on the end of probes and stuff no so after that perspective fault current now we need that earthing conductor in for this test Single phase, it's pretty straightforward. Most um, meters that I use want the three leads for this, as uh, so they use a low current. Um, but just connect where your meter says to connect and press test and record your reading. Um, you want the highest one out of live earth and live neutral. For three phase, you're gonna double the highest one from your live neutral test to simulate the full current we would get between phases. Very important you understand that. Again, if you're not sure, look it up before your assessment. So after PFC, it's a good idea to go on to automatic disconnection of supply. So that's your ZS. Um, for initial verification, we tend to take the R1, R2 reading we got earlier and add it to the ZE uh, for every circuit. So do that now and check its compliance against the values in tables in the regs. But be careful because the tables in the regs need adjusting. They're at the limiting temperature and they bring in down to the maximum measured temperature. You can do that by multiplying each one by 0.8. Alternatively, you can just use the values in the on-site guide because they've already been adjusted. Phase rotation is something to consider on a three-phase system at this stage. Uh, just any relevant point on a three-phase circuit just make sure it's rotating in the same direction. The danger here is that motors could turn the opposite way that you thought they might if anything's wrong here. Then we've got RCD testing. Now it's got a lot simpler now. Um, we just need to do the half times and the one times. We don't need to do the times five anymore. So that's good. Half times, you're gonna do it at naught degrees and 180 degrees and it shouldn't trip and one times you're going to do it at 0 degrees and 180 degrees and it should trip in under 300 milliseconds. If that happens then we can also confirm additional protection um, and we don't have to do the five times. So that's probably saving a few RCDs out there because over testing is only going to kill it quicker. We also need to check that functional test button on the device itself. Make sure you test at the device and don't have any loads running in the circuit. Lastly, it's functional test. So make sure everything works on the install. It seems pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people kind of forget that in the, the kind of relief of finishing the test procedure and everything. Just make sure it all works. All the lights, anything that you can get going, get it going. And um, yeah. So I hope that's helped. Um, if you need any more details, because I've kind of washed over a lot of it, um, just write some comments and I'll try and get back to you. Cheers.